Well, it is a wet, damp, a miserable start to April here on the small holding. That's just the weather, not Stephen and I. You might be able to hear in the background, we are doing indoor jobs today. Stephen is busy stripping our hallway and porch at the front door entrance to the farmhouse. Um, that has been like that since we very first moved in and that's a job that he's been putting off and I've been putting off for the last eight years or more. So we're finally getting that started today so I can guarantee he's gonna to wanna to get outside at some point rather than be stuck inside the house. And I've got a whole host of kitchen work to catch up on. So I'm gonna take you along and show you what I'm up to in the kitchen today. So as we've been rained off outside, I thought I'd get cracking inside. This is a eight years in the making job. It's the last bit of decorating really in the house that we haven't done, the horn stairs, but it's a big job. But I thought I'd tackle this little job first to start with. It's just the entrance to the house off the front of the lane here. We hardly ever use this entrance, so we don't know what sort of state it's in. So like with all jobs, when you start taking paper off the walls, it un uncovers other people's misdoings or whatever. So it's got a bit of shoddy workmanship there where there's a wire running up, I think. And on this side, you can pretty much see all the, what it's built out of, breeze blocks. But with it only being a small little room, I think I can tackle this one myself with plaster and paint. And we'll want to move it in the hallway. That's a bit out of my league. So I'll continue with this, get this bottom, whatever this is, wood chip, gyps and wallpaper, whatever it is, try and get that off and then see what mysteries uncovered from there. So while Stephen carries on getting started again, I just had something to eat. So I thought I'd let you know, this house is basically a house of two halves. I've mentioned this before. Um, the front of the house was built onto the back of the house. The back of the house is originally 1850, we believe, but we don't know when the front of the house was, at, was added. It is literally two houses joined together. And there is an archway here, which was the original door. In fact, if I move forward, you'll be able to see where I'm talking about. So this archway here was the original front door. And then all of that section in front of that, which has got, if you can see, there's a room here and there's a room here. That's all been added on after the original house was built. And it's quite a long time after we think. We can't find anything on any of the historical documents to say when this was built. That's something that I've just started looking back into again. So fingers crossed I managed to get some of that because I'm really interested in all that kind of stuff. But for now, we're gonna work, as Stephen says, on that front little entrance, entrance bit. And then we're gonna make a start on all of this here, which is original to the house. We haven't touched this in the whole eight years we've been living here. You maybe did see us once too in the floor way because the floor desperately needed replacing. So we did do that, but we left the rest of the walls because essentially as we've been doing all of the other housework, the hallway and stairs is the kind of the main through area, isn't it? So you're doing each of the rooms off it and you're always going through the hall and stairs. So if we'd have done that first, it would need to redecorating again by now, which is what we're saying anyway. So we should never start this. That's our excuse and we're sticking to it. Well, I'm finally in the kitchen. I've been getting dragged into lots of other different things, but I'm concentrating on working for the next hour or so in here because I really need to get ahead on certain things. And there were some things that are really time critical that I wanted to get going earlier on in our two weeks off or my two weeks off a week for Stephen so that I can see, see the results by the end of the two weeks and share all of that with you. Now, some of this, don't switch off because I know it might sound very typical homesteadery. All homesteads, all small holdings make sourdough, sour sauerkraut, all of the things fermented, but bear with me, okay? So yes, I do have a cabbage, but don't hold it against me. Um, Over the last couple of months, we've been, <sighs> Stephen's just tripped the electrics. We try again this is why i can't get anything done i've just been helping with the electrics okay so over the last few months we have had different ailments in the house that i was not quite prepared for from a home remedy perspective so there obviously there's certain things that you can have honey lemon ginger all of those usuals that you can buy and use day to day which we do but i didn't have any of my other bits and pieces going on which i think and i feel might have helped out so the other day I found myself looking on a website um, that we've got here in the UK 
for some extra vitamins and things. Now, I know I've talked briefly about this before, and there was a suggestion at the time, like, do you really need to be taking those kind of things? But at that time, I was so focused on getting extra vitamins and minerals from um, synthetic sources, possibly, I suppose you could say, but basically non-food. I've gone down that rabbit hole and I've now brought myself back out of it. I don't want to be purchasing extra vitamins and minerals that we don't need that we can obviously get from our food so i found myself the other day looking for some probiotics prebiotics that kind of thing and i thought well, what are you doing we have got kefir grains in the fridge there um they just need to bring them back to life so that's something else that i'm going to be doing today and this is because as I say, over the last few um, weeks and months, we've had different medications doing the rounds, some of which have been antibiotics, and I've got everything I need here to help heal everybody's guts that need healing. One of the things I'm gonna be doing is the sauerkraut. Yes, I know that sounds very cringy because that's what everybody does when they first become a homesteader. But honestly, the vitamins that you can get from cabbage, red cabbage is better, but this is all I've got at the moment, is absolutely phenomenal. I think they say vitamin C, is like through the roof compared to other things that you think have got a lot of vitamin C in and it's just a really good food for you to have and to be quite honest all that aside we really enjoy it it's just a nice crunchy topping to be able to add to whatever it is that you might be eating like a burger or a salad or something like that you can add it into other meals you can heat it up if you want so that's what I'm going to be getting on with in the kitchen today so I'm going to get started by chopping up well my food process is going to chop up because um, I've done it with a knife before and it was much quicker and worked a lot quicker with the food processor when I say quicker in terms of the fermentation time so literally all you need for sauerkraut is a head of cabbage and some sea salt so rather annoyingly I've put the piece the bit of equipment that I need that goes on here so then put the grater on I've put it in a safe place so obviously I can't find that right now so we are going to do it this way and hope for the best it'll all eat because this isn't kind of for preserving for a long time this is for eating as soon as it's fermented so let's see what actually happens let me get a chopping board make this a bit smaller okay so it's turned into one of those days where it's taking a lot longer to get everything ready than it should not totally going to plan today i'm not gonna lie right i'm gonna weigh out my cabbage and then we're gonna work out so i've got some sea salt here so not the um table salt that you can get like the really cheap table salt it needs to be sea salt apparently and i'm gonna weigh out the cabbage and we are going to do two percent salt based on the volume the weight of the cabbage so i'm just gonna work it out now and then i'm also gonna add in i've got a teaspoon of already um, weighed out, well, sorry, tablespoon, not a teaspoon, they're not weighed out, poured out. Um, caraway seeds, I've never tried that before, so we'll see how that works. I'm just going to transfer my completely shredded cabbage. Um, I mean, this is literally completely shredded. Weigh that out, work out 2% salt, and I'm just going to stir that in and leave it to one side. For now, I'm not going to massage it in, which you might have seen, um, just so that it can get started whilst I get on with other things. When I say get started, I mean just so the brine can get started to, uh, the salt can work through the cabbage to create that brine. And that's it, that's all your ingredients. So we've got 862 grams of cabbage. Let me do the maths. Add in the caraway seeds, the salt, and we'll leave that to one side. Right, I'm literally gonna leave that covered up for an hour or so. While I get on with the next thing. Well, at this point, there is a lot of noise going on in my house, and I was eager to get these kefir grains restored again. So they have literally been sat in milk in the fridge um for weeks now. So I've got them out of the fridge, emptied out the thick milk that they were in, and literally rinsed off, off the grains in that plastic sieve that you can see there. The grains look, whoops, just pick that one back up. The grains look like little tiny cauliflower florets to me. That's what they always remind me of. So I've got maybe a teaspoon of grains there and all I'm doing in is adding some whole milk. Normally I use raw milk, but I don't have any right now. And I just literally, um, what you call refreshing them with some milk. This isn't, this bit in that you've seen me pour in now is not going to be to drink. This is purely to refresh the grains and get them going again and giving them a feed. The next day, I'm going to strain them out again. I won't wash them and then I'll add more milk. Right, so it turns out now I've got it all stripped that this portrait was actually part of the hallway. This has been added afterwards because the skirting board runs through and it's just been cut off there where they put this porch in probably to 
keep the draft out from the front door maybe, I would have thought. But uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with it now. The light wasn't working so I've managed to get that working. It was just rewired wrong in the roof so it's little winds. But I think we're going to change the floor. I might Now I might start the hallway and just get somebody in to plaster the whole thing because it's it's a bit rough around the doors and around the bottom where I put the skirting board up. So I don't know what to do. Tracy wants to keep these dado rails that run right through the hallway. I'm not sure, I think we should take them off. Uh, to get a little pole going, what do you think? <laughs> but before we, if I do get a plaster in, that'll make a mess of the wall. But I don't know what we're going to do yet. I'm not really keen on starting that hallway, but it might have to be done. We've put it off for eight years, Stephen. I know. But that's just took two hours just to do this little bit. Imagine what you can get done in a week. Right. Stephen didn't mention, but he's just looking at it now as well. Um, we may have to replace the front door, not from a security point of view, but because it's actually um, leaking in. So he's looking to see if he can repair where it's leaking himself or if it's going to need a completely new door. This door is probably a very old one as well, but it's not something we've ever had to do is replace any doors or windows, actually, have we? Well, it's not. It's just an old plastic PVC door. I don't... We'll sure. see. So while Stephen is getting back on making quite a lot of noise, I thought let's crack on in the kitchen and get on with my next task. But I'm going to talk you through it because, as I say, there's a lot of different noises going on in the house right now. So next up on my list is kombucha. Now, kombucha has been a lifesaver for me. That's slight exaggeration, but you get the point in a minute. Um, since January of this year, I've been drinking it as a replacement for red wine. So red wine is my um, drink of choice, should we say, if I'm going to have some alcohol. And I decided to take a break from it from January up until Good Friday which is actually my first day off for the first video that I did of this series and kombucha is almost as expensive as the wine I've been drinking so now that I'm drinking again so to speak it's going to be a toss-up between kombucha and wine you know which one is going to win so I've made kombucha in the past and it's worked out absolutely fine however I didn't stay on top of keeping the scoby alive the scoby is the little kind of ugly looking alien thing that you put into to, to create, create your kombucha and allow the fermentation to happen. Um, you'll see that shortly. So I decided to purchase a brand new scoby, they're not that expensive, and get that sent over so that I can now get a new batch of kombucha started and have this as kind of a soft drink for during the day, etc. Over the summer, it's a really, really nice drink to be able to have. Don't be put off by seeing me take the temperature of the water, etc. It really is simple to make. Literally, you've got just off the boil water you're adding in two tea bags i'm just using black assam tea bags is that how you say it adding in a certain amount of sugar all of this is with the instructions on the website so it is really really simple brew the tea for 15 minutes and then when that comes down to room temperature you're simply going to add that to the kombucha scoby that you've purchased and they'll also send a little bit of liquid for you to add in which is enough to get your starter your new mix going so i'm just going to leave this to come to room temperature now still throwing it down outside Stephen and i are going a little bit cabin feverish in the house even though we haven't been in that long so let's head out and get on with our afternoon jobs right we've just took we've just took a break from inside because we've got a job to do out here it's still tanking it down but we need to do this so we've got one of our cockerels we're going to dispatch just to see how they turn out for us to use in the future so all i'm going to do is dispatch it i've got a bucket of hot tap water which is about 53 and a half degrees we checked that this morning so we're just going to dispatch it dunk it in the water we're not going to use the normally if we're doing a few we get the boiler going and we get the chicken plucker out we're not going to do any of that we're just going to try this one dunk it in the water we'll hand pluck it and then we'll hang it in the fridge till tomorrow before we put in everything so we're just going to do it to see how it turns out so we'll get on with that because i'm getting soaking wet so these are the the birds that we're raising for me so I don't know if you can tell the difference, but there's two cockerels there. This one here with a big long tail, and this one's a cockerel as well. Is that one a cockerel as well? I think so. And that one's a cockerel as well. So I think the one we're going to choose is that one there, because he's not as dominant as the other ones. And we've got four, uh, four cockerels and eight hens, which is too many for that. But we don't want to kill too many of them, like three of them, and leave one, because then we might the one we leave might not be fertile. So we're just going to do one now to try it. And this one there is the unlucky culprit, unfortunately. 
So we'll get, get him caught and get him done. Well, everything went absolutely fine with dispatching the cockerel that is now hanging in our fridge that we use solely for those purposes. Um, we will have that not tomorrow, which is Tuesday, but Wednesday the day after. And I'll show you exactly what we're going to be doing with it. And we'll let you know exactly how it tastes and if it's worthwhile. Um, these birds were hatched at the end of, right at the end of August. So this is a lot older than a lot of people do um, their birds. So it will definitely be slow cooked, but I'm totally fine with that because where I'm at at the moment, everything needs to be slow cooked. Um, if it can't be quick, quick cooked in five minutes, it needs to be slow cooked all day because uh, that's just how we work right now. So I'm just getting everything set up to get the horses out because I think we can safely say today's not gone as planned. I'm going to talk to you about that in just a second. I don't feel like I've achieved anything. <laughs> um, I ended up getting a phone call and had to go out for a couple of hours of, of which time I was supposed to be spending in the kitchen. So I'm going to go back in and I'm going to get that kombucha added. Um, so I've made the tea as I think I'll have told you guys by now, because I did record it, I was going to do a voiceover. So I'm hoping that that bit of the video is done. I am now going to go back in and add the kombucha scoby, which is in the packet that I showed you, to the tea that I've made. And then we're going to leave that to ferment for, I think it's five to seven days. Um, but I'm going to take you along in the process. And obviously we're doing the sort of the daily or every other day, whatever it turns out to be vlogs. I'll keep you posted. And then I'll be able to kind of go back over and say what the steps are. I've done kombucha before, um, and I was keeping all of the scobies alive. Uh, so the scobies are the little, um, like sort of discs that you buy from the the ferment fermentation shop or whatever. Or if you've got a friend that does it, you know, borrow one from them. Um, but mine had not been fed for a heck of a long time, so that's why I wanted to start afresh. I haven't got around to doing the ginger bug, which was the other smaller packet that I wanted to get done today. So Stephen loves ginger beer, um, and obviously as a alcoholic, a al al as an alcohol-free option. Um, I haven't had a, an alcoholic drink, which is making me speak like this yet, by the way. Um, that I thought would be something that would be really nice for him to have. So that's why I'm going to do the ginger beer and you start that off with the ginger bug, or at least that's the version that I'm doing anyway. So hopefully we will get to that at some point this week and I can show you the results of that and we can do a taste test with Stephen. Um, I don't do ginger beer normally, so I wouldn't be able to tell you if it's a good one or not, but he does. So fingers crossed. But yeah, we can safely say today hasn't gone as planned. So right now I'm supervising the horses because uh, unfortunately, this time of year when they're not out in the fields um, because it's so, so wet still. This is literally the first bit of dry we've had today. Um, when the fields are so wet, they just can't go out because one, they'll trash the fields, two, they might fall over and break a leg. And then you're just without any grass for the summer or worst case scenario, without a horse. Um, so that's why they're still not out in the fields, but that means that they're out in the little area that you see us turn them out in all the time. But by now they're getting fed up of being in there and they want to be out in the fields. So they're starting to get a little bit grumpy with each other, starting to scrap a little bit. So I have to supervise them when they're out. It's like having toddlers again. So I've actually changed the hay net. So the one just to the right here, you can see we've got a hay net for this little pony and for the horse over there. There's normally one over there as well, um, instead, of, instead of just here. Always having an itch, three-legged horse. Um, so yeah, I've had to move them because they were starting to get grumpy over the hair nets and nobody wants any more injuries or any more vet spills or anything like that. So just keeping an eye on them, we'll get their stables done and then that'll be me in and get some more things done inside. Though I'm not gonna commit to anything because as soon as I commit to something, you can guarantee plans will change. Your feet a little bit sore, mister. Well, the licks have come out, which are these blue and orange tubs. Try and keep them occupied, but I think we're about on borrowed time. So I think these are going to be coming in any second now. True to form for the rest of this video, things had not gone to plan that day. So it's a totally different day now where I'm going to be showing you the final bits of the kefir change that we did. So I put the kefir, the grains that you saw in the milk, in the fridge and just left it in there. Once those had kind of um, absorbed all of the nutrients and eaten all of the sugars from the milk, I've emptied that milk out and I am now ready. I've got the kefir grains in the bottom of this jar. They are not washed or anything. That is just literally with that milk drained out. Now it's time to get started. This is going to be for consuming. So in however many 24 plus hours time, and the reason I say however many is because it's different for everybody. Some people prefer to leave it for a little bit longer and have it a bit more sour. And some people pr prefer just to use it every 24 hours. So for the amount of kefir grains I've got in this jar, which is approximately a teaspoon, I just literally fill up the 500 ml jar with whole milk. 
and then I'll leave that and any time from 24 hours time we will start consuming this just literally drain the kefir, drain, kefir grains out and then consume it either just straight on its own or you can do different flavoured kefirs you could add it to breakfast to yogurts to whatever your heart desires the longer the longer you leave it the thicker it gets and you can even make kefir cheese with it which is basically like a soft cheese like the birth brand philadelphia really really nice perfect time of year to start adding your chives into it your salt so we're going to do some of that as well not quite just yet though because i want the family to start consuming this and that's going to be a challenge in itself anyway speaking of challenges thank you for sticking through this video with me was it a challenge for you watching it or was it just a challenge for us getting through the day really appreciate you hanging around please leave us a comment as always and we will see you on the next one